This is my problem. And it's not the police all the time, because I've had very good experiences with police officers. At the same time, I've had very bad experiences with police officers. So just think of it as, I think of it as like anesthesia. When a doctor doesn't want you to feel pain, he delivers anesthesia to your wound, right? That's what we go through. There's so much happening to me and people of my color that I'm numb to it. It doesn't hurt anymore. It hurts, but it doesn't hurt anymore. If y'all can't understand that, then I don't know what y'all understand. Welcome to the press conference today. Uh, as your mayor, I would like to take a few moments and talk to you about the protest that is scheduled to happen in our community on Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. this week. A couple things I wanted to go over with you. Uh, I fill a couple roles as your mayor. Two of them are uh, what I'm going to focus on today. Uh, one of my primary roles as the elected official is the ambassador of the community. So it's my job to welcome people to the community. It's my job to be the ambassador of our community. And I am also um, charged with public safety, the safety of our citizens, watching to make sure that we make good decisions to keep everyone safe. And the activity that will occur this Thursday falls under both of those. So as the ambassador of the community, first I would like to uh, welcome the protesters to our community. They do have a constitutional right uh, under the First Amendment of the Constitution to gather peaceably to uh, protest um, things that they want under freedom of speech. We are working uh, diligently with all of the law enforcement bodies, the local police department, the county sheriff's department, and the Iowa State Patrol to ensure safety for the protesters as well as safety for our citizens and business owners. And I wanted to go over a few of the things to keep everybody in the loop on what we're doing as it relates to that. I would like to let you know that we have discussed uh, the intent of the protest and uh, the format of the protest uh, with some organizers of the protest, specifically uh, Jasmine Howe. Uh, Chief Warburton has spoken with Jasmine yesterday. I reached out and spoke to Jasmine today about 12.30 p.m. Uh, we had a good conversation. I asked her uh, what their intent was, um, why they chose Spencer, and if it was okay to go over a few of those things with you today, and she said it sure was. Um, I would li like to let you know that uh, the conversation I had with Jasmine was very productive. Um, I do believe that the intent of the activity on Thursday comes from a place of good-natured um, spirit to bring awareness uh, to the incident that happened in Minneapolis and uh, the general treatment of uh, African Americans uh, by police in general in this country, as you've seen on most of your media uh, channels. So with that, I'll get into what Jasmine and I talked about. I asked what uh, I could relay to the people during the press conference about what they would like, uh, what their end goal of the protest is, and she mentioned uh, a couple things. Uh, number one, they want to bring awareness that racial profiling does exist in the United States. Uh, number two, they want to acknowledge that racism does exist in the United States. They would also like to bring awareness to the fact that innocent people are being attacked by police officers. And they also would like to bring awareness to the fact that three of the four police officers are currently not in jail in the situation in Minneapolis. Um, they, uh, Jasmine said that they feel um, it is their part of their responsibility to acknowledge that while many of these events happen in some of the largest communities in the United States of America, that they also happen in smaller towns across the country, and uh, they would like to be the voice of the smaller community to bring awareness uh, to here. I have had questions about if the four organizers live in Spencer. Uh, I believe two, if not maybe three of the four, have lived in Spencer at times in their life. They don't currently live in town, but they have uh, resided in town, have interacted in town, have spent their money in town, and have worked in town, I believe. So uh, they are very diligent about saying that they want this to be a safe event. Uh, public safety is also important to them, as it is to me as the mayor. Um, they do not want violence. They don't condone violence. They don't encourage violence. Uh, one of the organizers made clear that uh, they're bringing their children with them, um, then they would not bring their children to an event if they had planned to make it a, a volatile event. 
Uh, we have taken the uh, steps to address every rumor that comes our way. Uh, we take every rumor very seriously. Um, you've heard probably rumors of there's buses from Fargo coming, there's buses from South Dakota coming, there's buses from insert the name of the town coming. We've tracked every one of those leads down and have no reason to believe that those are credible. Um, I'm not saying that those buses aren't coming, I'm saying that we have not been able to validate any of those rumors. And anytime we do hear something, we follow that up. I would also like you as the citizens, um, if you do hear something or you do feel that there is a legitimate lead on something that could impact the community on Thursday night, please forward that information to City Hall and we will do what we can to track that down. To the business owners that are along the march path as well as just business owners in town, uh, I know there's high anxiety based on what you've seen across the country. Um, there's high anxiety based on actions that uh, people have taken against businesses and, and business owners. Uh, we are bringing extra law enforcement presence into the community. Um, we've reached out to surrounding communities, and as I said at the beginning, the local and county and state law enforcement have a coordinated effort. So you will see a uh, larger police presence than you will normally see in the downtown area, and uh, we're not doing that because we think there will be a problem. We're doing that to help prevent a problem. And so public safety, as I said at the beginning, is one of our number one priorities, and we will put every measure in place uh, to protect the citizens of Spencer.
very clear. My message to you today, and my prayer for you today, is that you find your mission, your own personal mission within this movement. When, what's his name? George Floyd! When George died in Minneapolis, that was the event that started the cause, which is now the movement. But a movement is more than a cause, a movement is people.
understand because I watch too much TV and listen to too much Jay Z. I told them they're gonna need a warrant for that. <laughs> they gave me two options: let them search the car, or they could bring the drug dog in. I chose the latter. I was handcuffed and sat on the sidewalk and watched as the, as the officers followed by a third officer with a drug dog ransacked my car and tossed around my meager belongings, including my little, you know, audio set adjustment because I had a tape deck. Using a flashlight, one of the officers walked over to me and started searching the adjacent sewer drain. After they found nothing, one of the officers told me, I'm going to call you Houdini next time I see you because I don't know how you made those rocks disappear. I was a 21-year-old college student when this happened. Just about every black man has a story like this. I want to get to George Floyd, Alton Sterling, Belendro Castile, Mike Brown, and countless more. It ends far worse than snarky remarks and sore wrists, which is why we are here today. The system needs to change. We need reform, we need accountability, and most of all, black and brown people need true allies to help us stop the racism, racial profiling, and police brutality. This is all order to fix all of that, and I don't know how we can. However, today, and the movements across the country leading up to this, those were a good start. Black people aren't asking for special treatment. On the contrary, we want the same thing we always wanted. True equality.